Next question is from Burnsy Fitness. What are the benefits of electrolytes? How do they work? How much is a good amount to intake as an active person? So electrolytes, uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, they are essential for the way that your cells communicate with each other. Um, and when you sweat a lot, when you're active a lot, you excrete a lot of these and you need more of them. So if you've ever tasted your sweat, you know that it's a little salty, for example. You lose mm. sodium quite a bit when you sweat. And the side effects of, of having not enough electrolytes include weakness, reductions in performance, muscle cramping is quite common. Uh, it's not the only reason why muscles cramp, but it's more often than not one of the reasons. So if you get like lots of calf cramping or while you're working out your muscles cramp, this might be one of the reasons why. I actually think it's one of the most common. It is one of the most common. Um, it's not the only reason, like other things can cause that too, but it's the most common. Um, you know, if you're very active and you sweat a lot, it probably makes sense to replace your electrolytes by adding them into your diet. Now, I remember the old, do you guys ever read the old Gatorade studies? You know, Gatorade was originally like a, it was a, a, an invention for, I think it was Florida State, if I'm not mistaken. It's Florida Gators. Yeah. Yeah. Florida and, University. And original Gatorade was much more, much higher in sodium uh, than it is now. Oh, but, was it really? Yeah. And and they, they, they put the, at, like mm -hmm. they put more adequate amounts or appropriate levels of sodium and they gave it to their athletes and they saw the performance improve. And it's true. Like if you're playing out in the sun, especially in Florida, you're playing football and you're sweating your ass off and you're losing sodium, you definitely reduce performance. So the studies show that it worked. And then of course, now we know Gatorade's super popular. It's not the same formula, by the way, as it originally was. Um, but uh, go ahead. It, it, it was so apparent um, coming from playing out here in California where the weather's pretty mild. I mean, you get some hot days, but uh, going to the Midwest where the humidity would get up into 90 to 100%, uh, I would literally lose about 10 pounds before I even started playing football games. So, uh, you know, losing, so, and, and it didn't even matter if you're completely hydrated and hydrating yourself uh, going into it. Uh, that was something that was essential uh, to be able to make sure that I, you know, didn't have that uh, dehydrated, you know, pukey feeling out there on the field. Yeah, I remember as a as an early trainer, actually, this is when I first uh, opened my personal training studio or wellness studio. It, it, actually, it's even before I had a studio. I rented a space in the back of a tanning salon. There was a gym back there. And then I had a trainer who started working for me. And she was an exceptional trainer, worked with lots of athletes, was an athletic trainer. And I remember her, I was listening to her. I used to love learning from other trainers, right? So I overheard her talking to one of her clients who was a runner. So this person ran marathons and half marathons. And she said, what I want you to do uh, before every run is to take a pinch of uh, Himalayan you know, sea salt or whatever and just put it in yeah. your water. And I'm like, salt in your water? Why are you having this? So I, I heard this. I'm like, what? So when they left, they said, why did you tell your client to put salt in their water? She's like, well, you lose a lot of sodium when you sweat a lot. And, and that makes a big difference in performance. And I was like, oh, yeah. Like, obviously, sodium is an electrolyte. That makes perfect sense. So I started recommending it to my endurance athletes, and it made uh, a big difference. If you don't eat a lot of processed foods, you I probably need it too. I was just going to say that. So yep. my views on this changed a lot recently, uh, ever since we got introduced to LMNT. In fact, we, we've talked about this before, that it actually sat in our studio for I don't know how many months yep. before any of us even opened it up. Because to be honest... Um, you know, I, I don't identify with a marathon runner or somebody who does endurance sports. Uh, I strength train. Um, but something else that I do that it, it never really, I never thought about it like this was um, I don't eat like I ate when I was 25 years old. As a 25 year old, I ate a lot of crap still. I ate a lot of, a lot of sodium in my diet because like I was, processed. Yeah, a lot of processed foods. I ate out all the time, fast food all the time. I still did that even as a trainer. Um, since I'm probably 30 years old, maybe even a little bit before. I eat relatively, really clean 95% of the time. It's rare that I'm eating processed foods or eating anything that I'd consider, you know, quote unquote junk food. And I, d I did not expect to feel the performance difference in my workout drinking uh, like a drink like LMNT. And I did. And it makes sense now when I think about the amount of sodium that I'm probably intaking because of eating whole foods most of the time. So now the way I look at it is like either – if you're an endurance athlete, I think you're going to you're going to greatly benefit and or if you eat really clean. 
Mm -hmm. If you're somebody who doesn't eat a lot of processed foods, even if you're not mm -hmm. an endurance athlete or training hardcore out in the sun or uh, high humidity, I think you'll greatly benefit from doing it. Uh, just, just seeing your gym workout. If you eat really clean, if you're somebody who doesn't salt or I shouldn't say salt, because even salting your whole foods is still not enough. If you're just not somebody who eats processed foods and eats out, I think you're going to benefit from it. Yes. I, here's another one. Low-carb dieters. If you eat a ketogenic diet or you eat a low-carbohydrate diet, your body gets rid of lots of water naturally and holds less sodium. You know the whole keto flu that people talk about when they cut their carbs? And they're like, oh, you're going to go through this period where you feel kind of crappy in your body. Sometimes that's because you need more sodium. So the reason why people feel crappy when they drop their carbs super low is not necessarily because their carbs are low, but rather because they don't have enough sodium. And I've actually done this test on myself. I, I will intermittently go through periods of ketogenic dieting. And when I first learned about this, I said, let me give this a shot. Sure enough, you know, went real low carb, saw my body dropping water, increased my sodium, felt phenomenal, had tons of energy. I was like, holy cow, makes a huge difference. For people who just like to lift weights, like Adam was saying, um, especially if you eat clean, try, you know, a good electrolyte drink with an appropriate amount of sodium. Most electrolyte drinks are too low in sodium because they're afraid of the sodium numbers. Uh, LMNT is a great example. Thousand milligrams of sodium for a serving. Watch your pumps. That's the biggest thing yeah. I notice. I get crazy pumps from drinking that versus if I, if I didn't it makes a huge difference. Well, working with these kids, uh, it, it reminds me too, just uh, in terms of like hydration in general. Uh, but then I had, I had them adding the Himalayan sea salt, but then, uh, decided to give them some LMNT and they've had some, some great results in terms of a lot of the kids in the beginning were dropping like flies with cramps and, uh, you know, with, with tight muscles and, uh, you know, once they started doing that pre, uh, practices because we are going pretty rigorous and they're sweating a lot and it's in the heat, uh, made a dramatic difference. Awesome.